Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. The Undercliff by Richard Parks Bonington. Foreboding waves crash the Undercliff painting. This makes literal and figurative sense. After all, Richard Parks Bonington painted it one month before he died. He was only 25 years old and suffering with TB. It was 1828, and tuberculosis was known as the robber of youth at the time. That's because TB fatalities were especially high among young people. In fact, Bonington and John Keats, the poet, were two particularly talented victims that year. The painting's front spotlights a dejected figure at the left, but this isn't the only portrait of doom in the piece. A haunting cliff looms above. Dark waves bear down on the shore. Tides push and pull upon the bluff like the unrelenting rhythm of life and death. In the painting's middle, sailors struggle with boats on the sandy shore. They represent everyday tangible toil. Work's got certainty. It lies between lofty cliffs above and the despondent foreground figure. Imminent death in watercolor. Cliffs are a familiar symbol. When you see from one from below, as we do in the undercliff, it feels far away. Here, it symbolizes a remote mystery. This cliff stands as a distant spiritual beacon. But what does it call us to do? Bonington knew he would die as he was painting it. It's a mortality reminder. That may be why Richard painted this in watercolor and on paper. These materials reflect life's temporary and fragile nature. They're delicate, just as his grip on life was at the time. In fact, painting with watercolor takes a light touch with the brush. Each stroke requires great care, or it's easy to ruin the painting's tenor. The undercliff presents a precipice from underneath, but cliffs symbolize doom no matter how you look at them. Cliffs are a spiritual symbol precisely because they present sky-high stakes. Richard Park's Bonington's Bluff hovers above the scene, with icy white beauty. It's imposing on the viewer while also enticing the eye. You can't help but look back to the cliff again and again. The sad figure up front also grabs attention. Sure, he's a bit of a faceless downer, but he begs the critical question, why? He's leaning in such dejected way there's a story to this man. This may be Richard Parks Bonington, bowing his head to death. After all, he can't live everyday life as he once did. The distraction of his imminent death prevents that. In fact, elements of the everyday surround our pathetic figure. Sailors lugging boats into the sand represent the tangible life he's leaving behind. The cliff symbolizes the opposite. It's the spiritual interference of death looming over mankind. 
this conveys the profound message of the Undercliff. Mortality awaits us all. This majestic watercolor is called the Undercliff, and it was painted by Richard Parks Bonington. He was about to die when he did this painting. He was only 25 years old and suffering from a severe case of tuberculosis. In fact, he died only one month after it was completed. And the thing that's most extraordinary about this painting, the Undercliff, I think, is that sense, that looming sense of doom that we feel. It's a watercolor, but it doesn't feel light and spirited. It feels heavy. And we feel the weight. We have this figure in the front with his head down, and he's clearly facing something horrendous, like death, while we have this tremendous beauty of this cliff in the back, probably symbolizing his spirit, which will never die. The Undercliff, FAQs. Where can I see the Undercliff in person? Nottingham Castle Galleries and Museum in the UK houses the Undercliff. Unfortunately, as of 2020, it's under construction. But as soon as this place reopens, I'm booking my trip to revisit this historical site. It's packed with rich stories and a keen art collection. Was painter Richard Parks Bonington French or British? Richard moved to France from his native England at 14 years old. He brought bits of British style to French painting, so he was certainly a British citizen, but many consider him as much a French painter as a British one. He even attended the L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts. Also, his first exhibition showed at the Paris Salon. In what style did Richard Parks Bonington paint the Undercliff? Bonington's known for his romantic landscape watercolors. Of course, they're from a time of high romance. Just as John Keats' poems will always be primo romantic, art plus dying young equals romantic. It's the formula that never fails. What's written on the back of the Undercliff painting? The painter's mother wrote on the Undercliff's backside. She said, August 6th and 7th, 1828, the last drawing made by our dear son about prior to his fatal dissolution, never to be parted with, E. Bonington. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.